Good afternoon. I am Stephanie O'Neill. This is Cuyacuson Middle School. This is my co-teacher, Mrs. Carter, and this is our physical science class showcasing our diverse population here at Cuyacuson with um, various levels of language learners in our science classroom. So today, guys, we have been talking about physical and chemical properties and elements, compounds, and mixtures. What we're going to do today is investigate components of a mixture and see how we can use our physical properties to separate parts of a mixture. So remind me, if you look in your notes, where we did our physical and chemical properties, remind me some examples of physical properties that we've talked about. It says properties on top. That one, yeah. Oh, that's good. You can share. Raise your hand. Remind me some physical properties that we've talked about. Mary. Color. Color. Shape. And texture. And texture. Okay. What are some other physical properties, Mohammed? States of matter. States of matter. That's a good one. Other physical properties that you guys see on your charts, on your notes. Say it louder. Texture, color, say it's a matter. Good. So knowing these physical properties, guys, when we have a mixture, think about like a salad, right? If you don't like tomatoes in your salad, you can pick out those tomatoes, right? So we're going to investigate a mixture of sand, sugar, iron, and rocks. And we're going to use tools that you may have used before for various other things to figure out how we can use those tools based on those physical components that we know about to separate these mixtures. Sound good so far? Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna pass out your trays. Don't touch anything, right, until you're given directions and we will get started. And you guys can close up your notebooks, but we're gonna work on this paper that you guys have. All right, guys, so in front of you, you have a little baggie. Hold up your bag. Good, good. In your bag, you have some rocks, you have sand, you have iron, and you have sugar. Looking at the tools that you have on your trays and thinking about as you make some observations about what's in your bag, we got to separate out these four pieces, these four materials. Our rocks, our sand, our sugar, and our iron. Looking at the tools that you have, talk with each other. What do you think is going to be the best tool to use first to separate out one component of your mixture? Jalen, what do you think? Which one? This one? This one? Okay. okay. Sarah, I like what you did there. What one do you guys think? Hello. What tool do you guys think first do you want to use to separate some of this stuff, to take out some of it? That one first? Okay, try that. Oh, Jose, you're already doing some investigating. <laughs> All right, hold up the tool that you discussed with your partner. Which one do you think you want to start with? Good, good, good. Does anyone know, this is on your sheet, does anyone know what this is called? Say it louder. A sieve. Where have you seen something like this before? You might not have called it a sieve, you might have called it something different. Where might you have used this before? Say it again. The sieve, the sieve part. Where might you have used it? Say it again. A garbage disposal, I like that, in, in your sink, right? To catch kind of your food bits, yeah? Right, to separate it from the water, right? Where else might you have used it in your kitchen? Nice, yeah, so you might have done that at like the science museum or something where you're like sifting, right? Perfect. Maybe if I'm boiling water and I'm cooking pasta, right, I use a bigger one, a colander, to drain it, yeah. So we call it a sieve in science, that's more of a fancy term for it, but you might know it more like a colander, a strainer, 
something like that, just a screen, something like that. So go ahead and put your sieve on top of your beaker, like some of you have done. Put it on top of your beaker, like that. And then open up the contents of your bag and carefully pour it through your sieve and see what material you're catching. Good, man. I like what you're doing to separate it all. Good, you mean? She's nice. Nice, guys. Got it? Good, good. Oh, you guys, I'd give you one of the bigger holes. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so what did you guys, what were you guys able to remove? The sand from the rock. The sand from the rocks, good. Mm -hmm. And what was it about the rocks versus the sand? What physical property helped you to be able to separate this? The size. The size, good. Since we had bigger pieces, we were able to use a screen. Some of you guys had different sizes in your screens too, right? To separate our big pieces size from our little particles. Perfect. So you're gonna take your rocks and then put them back in your bag. <laughs> you got it, huh? Good, good job, good job. All right, so we got one thing out of our mixture. We are now left with sand, sugar, and iron. Looking at your tools, what do you think will be the next easiest thing to use? Why are you choosing a magnet to use? Because you're trying to remove the iron from the, the rocks. What do we know about iron? What type of metal. element? Oh, say it louder. Metal. It's a metal, which means it is? Magnetic. Magnetic, perfect. All right, go ahead, use your uh, magnet, kind of swirl it around in your beaker, see what you're coming up with. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you find? Dale, dale, ma. Nice. Whoa, you guys got a lot of ones in there. Nice, guys. You guys got some, we're getting some. Oh, there's a lot in there, guys, nice. Good, good. What are you guys noticing? Got a lot? Good, good. Nice. Oh, Diana, you got a lot there. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. So what did you guys get? A lot of iron. Nice. Okay, so remind me again, why were you able to get the iron? Because the iron's metal and this is magnetic. Perfect. Awesome. Got some iron, guys? So once you guys have gotten your iron on your magnet, go ahead and you can use your bag to kind of take it off by taking your magnet and your iron like this and kind of just pinching the bag around it to kind of scrape that iron off. It's not gonna all come off perfectly and that's okay. You gotta shake off some of that sand, perfect. And then you're adding it back to your bag. So it's sometimes a little easier if you can use the bag too to kind of help scrape that off too. There you go. Perfect. It's all right if you guys can't get it all off. The iron bits are really, really tiny, right? Yeah. See if you can get more out from there, too. You have a lot of juice. Good job, good job. Why wouldn't you use the seed, what you just used, 
for the iron. Jamie, are we ready? Say it again? The iron's too small, right? Now that you saw how tiny those little iron flecks were, you know that wouldn't have worked really well for that, right? It would just go straight through with the sand. Good. So using our physical properties, right? Using knowing that iron is a metal, knowing that iron is a metal that's magnetic, we can use a, a magnet in order to extract it from our mixture. Good, good. All right, so here's our tricky part. We are now left with sand and sugar. Sand and sugar. And a few tiny rocks in there. What do you think we can do to separate our sand and our sugar? We have a filter left, right? Or one thing before we do this, guys, actually, go ahead and put, if you have your mixture in the beaker, go ahead and put it into your little tray. Yeah. Some of it might spill over, that's okay. Because I gave you some small trays. Yep. Go ahead and put your mixture in there. Go ahead and put your mixture on. Yep, there we go. Yep. Good. All right, now, eyes up here for a minute. We have our mixture of our sand and our sugar in our tiny tray. I know the tray's a little small. That's what we got. We have sand and sugar in there. How could we separate our sand and our sugar? Think about what you might have some background knowledge of for like sugar, salt. How could you get rid of that or separate it, at least temporarily, from something like sand? Boiling, Boiling it, what do you mean? You're right, keep going. <laughs> Filter and then do what? Adding, water. adding your boiling water, right? What's the boiling water gonna do? What is it going to do to the sugar? Kind of melt. What's up? Kind of. Say it again. Kind of melt. What's another word? We haven't talked about it yet, so it might be tricky. If we mix, if you've mixed lemonade mix in water, what happens to that mix? It dissolves. It dissolves. There we go. So you think that regular sugar should dissolve in water? Yeah. Do you think sand should dissolve in water? No. No, right? Because you guys kind of know that from like, you know, the beach and stuff, right? All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to use you guys for an example. Ladies, eyes up here. You guys are going to put your filter over your beaker like this. You're going to kind of bend it, make a little hole, and then wrap your filter paper like this. Hold on to it like that. And you're going to pour your sugar and your sand mixture into your little cup, like so. And then pour your mixture into your filter. Uh, yeah, Diana, go ahead and do it over your tray. Over your tray. Thank you. Good, good, good. You have it all. Good. Got it. All right, guys, so one thing as a full disclaimer, do we think this is going to work perfectly? No. We can probably expect some of our sand particles are really, really tiny. Some of them are going to kind of get through our filter paper. But for the most part, we're going to be able to have slightly clear water in the bottom that has sugar dissolved in it. So we're going to pour water gently into your filter, and you guys are going to see what happens. It's slightly warm, not hot. So hold on to the sides of your filter paper as we put your water in. It's okay if it gets a little wet. Just water. Go ahead and make it a little bit deeper for me so we don't have water spilling over the edge. Perfect. And hang on to it. Good. You guys ready? Perfect, Jose. You guys have a lot of sugar in there, you can tell, right? Good. Ready on the tray. Hold on tight to it. Good. 
Good. So what do you guys see happening as your water comes through? The water's dirty on top? Uh-huh. Last one. Oh, almost, guys. Sorry. Hang on. Hold on tight to that. All right. Hold on tight to your filter paper, guys. You get that one. Okay, good. So you guys will notice you can kind of see your sugar before, right, in your sand mixture. All right, guys. So in the bottom of your beaker with your water, we know it's not perfectly clear, but we know that is generally sugar in our water, right? How then are we going to be able to get that sugar separated from our water? Because now it's dissolved. We said it was dissolved in our water, but how do we get our sugar out of our water now? Evaporation. How could we evaporate it quickly? Boiling it. So if we boil our water, or we could set it out in our evaporation dishes for several days, right, we will end up seeing our sugar crystals back to being solid sugar crystals. And is that an example of a physical or chemical change? Physical. Why is it physical? Because you can take it back to its original state. Perfect. All right. We feel good about it? We will get started on our paper in a minute, but we're all set. Thank you guys for visiting our classroom at Cuyacasin. Have a great day.